What's going on guys, Merrick here, back with another Dragon Ball Super deck profile. I know it has been a little bit since we did another DBS video. A lot of stuff happened over the past week between multiple power outages in my area, internet outages. It's been rough. Uh, not just for the YouTube aspect, but because what the hell do you do when you have no power? Or what do you do when you have no freaking internet? Which my cable's also attached to, so I'm just like, ah! Anyway! This past weekend, we took one of my new favorite decks to our locals, and we actually did surprisingly well. There's a big difference between playtesting and playing in a competitive environment. Uh, attitudes are different, so um, I don't know. I just expected to do worse than I actually did. Uh, but we actually ended up taking second place with the deck, um, and the leader that we chose to use is easily one of my new favorite leaders as well. Golden Great Ape Sun Goku. Now, of course, he's got the generic, when this card attacks a leader card, draw one card effect. And when you have four or less life, you choose up to two energy, switch from active mode. Now, I've really grown accustomed to switching two energy to active mode when you awaken. It's actually so much better than getting to draw two, in my opinion. Granted, some decks would prefer the draw two, but nine times out of ten, just switching energy to active mode is so much better. Uh, and then, of course, when he awakens, he turns into... Long Odds Super Saiyan 4 Goku. I love this leader. I feel like this leader is severely underappreciated. Uh, when he attacks, of course, he draws a card. And when your life is less than or equal to your opponent's, he gains 5,000 power and critical. And that is a really big deal. Because it forces your opponent to play in a more defensive manner if they don't want you to get that boost and that crit. Um, otherwise, he has no ability unless you're weaker. But not only can you use cards in the deck to bridge that gap between life, you can also force the effect on yourself, um, causing you to get the free crit that you can use on your opponent. And I've done that several times, and a lot of times it's just, it's just better off for them to take that crit than to... Then to drop so much card advantage just to stop that crit ability. This leader, I just, I love it so much. Yes, the giant leader is still in the plastic. Um, and he will remain that way until I manage to get uh, bigger sleeves for it. Up first, we have arguably my favorite card from the set. And the card that I think will retain its value the most, excluding the Seeker Rares. Bardock the Progenitor. He's a 1 cost, 10,000 power with swap 2, so you can play him uh, and then attack with him and swap him out for a Goku lineage with an energy cost of 2 from your hand. And when you play him, you choose one card in your life and add it to your hand. So he allows you to self-awaken, he allows you to get uh, card advantage. Uh, it's not optional though, so I only use him uh, and up until I awaken, and then after that point, unless I need the extra cards, or I'm trying to get myself to have equal life to my opponent to get that crit ability. I don't ever play him uh, after I've already awakened. Uh, at that point, it becomes too dangerous to recklessly add life to your hand. So in place of him, we also run two adoptive father son Gohan. Right, it's me, my boy, it's me. Um, he is another one cost that you can swap to a Goku's lineage of energy cost of two. He's also a blocker, so he's nice to have on the board if you think your opponent is about to make a big push, or if they have a card that you really just don't want to hit you, such as a crit attacker. Up next, we run Gohan's grandson, Intrepid Dynasty Son Gohan. Uh, he's a 2 cost, 10,000 power with swap 3, so for 2 yellow energy, you can swap him with a Goku's Lineage with an energy cost of 3. Uh, I run 4 of him because he has Barrier, and personally I believe Barrier is one of the best abilities in the game. A lot of people hate it, a lot of people complain about it. And so because of that, I also intend to abuse it. 
uh, as other people do as well. And I would rather run four of him and only run two of the Dependable Dynasty Son Goku. Uh, just because the only thing that this Goku has going for him that the Gohan doesn't is 15,000 power. So he can attack and do a little more damage, but Gohan can also attack on his own. Uh, 10,000 can still do some damage, and if you need to attack the leader with him, you can either just combo once, you can just KO a battle card with him. Uh, so we only run two Gokus, um, he's also got swap three. And my favorite target to swap into is Ultimate Potential Super Saiyan 2 Sun Gohan. Uh, he's a three cost 15,000. Uh, when you play this card, choose up to one of your opponent's rest mode battle cards and KO it. So he doesn't care what their energy uh, level is. Uh, there's no restrictions except for it being in rest mode. And he has swap four for two yellow energy, so you can swap him out for a Goku's lineage with an energy cost of four. And we play four of him, and then to even it out, we also play two Indomitable Dynasty Super Saiyan Son Goku. Ka -me -ha the reason I like to play four of one level and two of another is because it gives you extra options and putting the Gohan out there, if they don't have anything to KO, he's just a vanilla 15,000. Whereas at least if you put out the Goku and they have nothing to kill, uh, he's got barrier, so he's protected. Uh, he also has swap four as well. Then we run four Discovered Dynasty Sun Gohan. This is easily one of my favorite cards in the deck. He's the only four cost that we run as well, um, but when he he has barrier and he comes into play using swap, you draw two cards. So he gets you a free plus two. He's a 20,000 attacker with barrier, and he initiates our swap five combo for three yellow energy. Our first five drop Goku's lineage is Deadly Golden Great Ape Sun Goku. He's a 5 cost 25,000 power, and when you play this card, choose up to one Goku's lineage with an energy cost 5 or less other than another Great Ape Sun Goku from your deck and add it to your hand. So he can search out anything in the deck. He can search out anything I run in the deck. Uh, so ideally, you're going to want to search for your super combo. Um, there's no reason not to. Or you can search for uh, another card that you want to swap to, uh, since he does have swap 5 for one yellow energy. That is amazing. Now, his permanent says you may not play this card from any area unless your leader card is Sun Goku GT. So that's one reason why we play the Super Saiyan 4 Sun Goku leader. Uh, you could also do it with uh, one of the two red GT leaders, but they're just not as good. I, I can't find any reason I would run them over this leader. To swap into Reborn Might Super Saiyan 4 Sun Goku. This is arguably my favorite card in the deck, even though I don't get to play it as much as I would like. He's a 5 cost 25,000 power, and his activate main says, Once per turn, choose one card from your life and add it to your hand. Switch this card to active mode, and if you have two or less life, this card gains triple strike for the duration of the turn. So you get to swing with him, add a card from your deck to your hand, and then swing with him again for triple strike. Now he does have swap 8 for 4 yellow energy, uh, but we don't main deck any 8 drops. Uh, personally, one, because I don't feel like it's necessary uh, when you've got all these other good cards that you can uh, end the game with. And also, the games don't really go long enough to be able to hit uh, the 4 energy for the swap 8. And I feel like it's just, it, there's better use of energy uh, during your end game like that. Possibly one of my favorite support cards that we have gotten in the entirety of this game is Prodigal Dynasty Sun Goten. <laughs> this card is so dope. He's a 3 drop 15,000, uh, but you never really want to play him. Uh, you actually want to keep him in your hands for his auto, which says when you combo with this card, if one of your yellow battle cards is being attacked, this card gains plus 10,000 combo power for the duration of the turn. So you combo with him, and if they're attacking any of your uh, yellow battle cards, you're giving them an extra 15,000. That's better than having a super combo uh, in most situations. And you can just drop one of these to 
protect any of your guys and even even the weaker ones if they combo over even if they drop I've had somebody drop a super combo just to try and kill one of my guys and this Goten just comes in and completely just saves the day definitely an awesome card then we've got four of our super combo plucky dynasty pan <laughs> Uh, she's a 4 cost 15,000, uh, which is kind of odd considering most super combos are 2 cost and 12,000, but it's because you can play her via swap. But ideally, you are never going to swap her out. There is no reason to swap her. I mean, you could swap attack and then swap it back to drop a 5 drop, but I really don't think that's ever going to be uh, necessary or is it going to be the best move for you to make. Uh, and then, of course, you know, if your leader card is a yellow Goku's lineage and life is four or less, draw one card and it gains 10,000 power. Then we have arguably the most OP card for the entire deck, Successor of Hope. It's a zero cost that says choose up to one Goku's lineage with the energy cost of five or less and swap from your deck and add it to your hand. This allows you to search your super combo, it allows you to search your Bardock's, it allows you to search for any of your cards and in my build specifically I can search for any card period because I don't run the eight drops in the main deck. And the fact that it costs zero energy is fantastic. So if you don't open with that Bardock in your hand but you open with a successor of hope you just play it. Uh, play a Bardock and just continue about your your turn. Now with set 4, Bandai started making leader specific cards again like they did with the time machine for future trunks and I am so glad that they did because some of these cards are just amazing and we run 4 of them. It's 10 times Kamehameha. <laughs> hey, this card is just phenomenal both offensively and defensively. For one energy, you can activate this card during battle. If your leader card is a Goku's lineage with Sun Goku in its character name, it gains plus 15,000 power and double strike for the duration of the turn. So you can activate this when you have your critical ability kicked in and you have that extra 5,000. You play this and that's 35,000 double strike crit coming at your opponent. I have hit so many people with this. And if you can't find the ability to use it on offense, you can just keep an energy or two open on your opponent's turn and when they come and swing at you with their big hitters, you just play this one card and it adds 15,000 power. So when you combine this with your super combos, there's literally no way that your opponent is getting through. And this card, uh, defensively, is just fucking amazing. Lastly, we have another leader-specific card. It's our Negate Instant Transmission. <laughs> For one energy, you negate the attack, and then if your leader card is Goku's Lineage, when you activate this card's counter, you may choose one card in your life and add it to your hand. If you do, you may activate this card's counter without paying the energy cost. So, if you're up on life, you can negate the card, you can negate an attack without having to use energy, you get the extra card to your hand, and you stop them from hitting you with whatever. They this also lets you tap out and still have a viable form of defense if you don't think what you have in your hand is enough to combo your way out of whatever they're willing to throw at you. Now for our side deck we took a page out of our old Yu-Gi-Oh days and we built our side deck with not only the intention to be able to counter cards that our opponent might play against us but also to swap our own deck strategy uh, during games two and three if we felt that we needed a different pace uh, to keep up with our opponent. And the first card that we side in is three Super Saiyan Blue Sun Goku at the Apex. Uh, he's our other five drop. You would replace the Super Saiyan 4 with him. Uh, he has Barrier and Double Strike. And when you play this card, if your leader card is Goku's Lineage, you choose an opponent's battle card and KO it. Ideally, he's kind of... He's got more utility. Um... However, I feel like the SS4 Goku is just such a better finisher. Um, one of the great things being that it has Triple Strike, which really, it doesn't make a whole lot of a difference, but Triple Strike will kill a Zamasu leader before they ever awaken, whereas Super Saiyan Blue Goku cannot do that. Uh, but this card was just in case I felt like I needed the barrier, or in case they had... Uh, just a board of things that I felt like needed killed and uh, he can still do double strike damage so he had a little more utility than SS4 if I felt like I didn't need to go as aggressively.
Now, when playing against a deck that played at a slower pace, wasn't as aggressive, uh, we sided in two, Height of Mastery, Sun Goku, uh, partially just because I did pull the SPR out of my four boxes. Um, he's an 8 cost, 35,000 with Deflect, which says this card is unaffected by counterplay skills. And he's also got Triple Strike and Dual Attack, which is fucking insane. And when you play this card with Swap, you choose up to a total of three of your opponent's battle cards or energy, ignoring barrier, and switch them to rest mode. So, pesky blockers, put them in rest mode. Pesky energy that they're Super Saiyan 3 leader left open so they can counter, put them in rest mode. Triple Strike Dual Attack, you are not living that. There's no way. There's no way you have enough cards to out-combo. Uh, this card is fantastic. The reason I don't main deck him, like I said, is I just don't see games going far enough for me to be able to play him right now. Uh, but he definitely stays in the side deck for slower pace games. Then for decks that like to have a lot of little guys swarm the field, such as uh, Machine Mutants or... More specifically, all the one-drop crit attackers running around. We've got Massey and the Mysterious Warrior. We run two of him uh, because for one energy you can overwhelm him. And KO any number of battle cards without blocker with five or less energy. Send them to the warp. So not only do you get them off the board, they go to the warp. Your opponent can't use them to overwhelm their own stuff. It's fantastic. It's just it's a good card. And with all these one-drop trunks and Gohans and Kabas running around... This is just one of the easiest ways to get rid of them besides full power energy. Now for those pesky decks that do run super aggressive and run all those one drop crit attackers, we side in four flying Nimbus. Uh, you can negate the attack and then place a yellow card in your hand in the drop area and if you do your opponent can only attack one more time with battle cards for the duration of the turn. I just noticed this says your opponent's. So that's a typo, but uh, this right here shuts down all those aggro plays. Obviously the whole deck is yellow, so I can just negate and then do my swap stuff and go about my way. Uh, Flying Nimbus, I thought about main decking it, but I don't like the discard aspect. And if they're not playing aggressively enough that I can't keep up, then I just think uh, Instant Transmission is the better card overall. And then lastly, for more control style decks, uh, I run four Bad Ring Laser. It's a counter counter that says play what place one yellow card from your hand to the drop area and negate the counters. So you can negate any of their negates and it's a great way to ensure that your final hit doesn't miss like attacking with uh, the leader for the double strike crit or even with attacking with Super Saiyan 4 for that triple strike to finish the game. Now if you're not a fan of the Super Saiyan 4 Goku leader that's not a bad thing. Uh, you can also run the Sun Goku leader from set 4. Uh, his his unawakened side is actually really nice. When he attacks a leader card, you may choose a Goku's lineage from your hand, place it in your drop area, and if you do so, draw two cards. So he lets you dig deeper into the deck, lets you feel your overwhelm for a little bit. Uh, but his unawakened side, Legacy Bearer Sun Goku, is just really bland. When you attack, draw a card, choose a Goku's Lineage in your battle area, and both cards gain 5,000 for the duration of the turn. That's not really that big of a deal. And compared to having an extra 5,000 and crit, uh, I just think the Super Saiyan 4 leader is so much better. And if you did want to go that route, obviously you can run the Golden Great Ape Goku. Uh, you, so what I would recommend at that point is to take out the four Golden Great Apes, take out the four Super Saiyan 4s, Add in four uh, Super Saiyan Blue Sun Goku at the apex. Two Dynasty Deferred Sun Goku, uh, mainly just so that you have extra targets that you can hit if you don't have a Goku a Gohan. Also, he does put himself back in active mode, but they both have barrier, and the plus two is just so much better. And then even throw in a couple Indomitable Dynasty Super Saiyan Sun Goku so that you have. Uh, four of them instead of just two. I tested this build as well. I personally don't like it as much. I never choose the four drop Goku over the four drop Gohan. Uh, I never played the Super Saiyan Blue Goku. Um, and like I said, the leaders just lackluster compared to the Super Saiyan 4.
Now, we got to play a pretty good variety this weekend. Uh, round one, we played against a uh, red aggro pan deck. Um, you all know how aggressive that deck can be, and uh, Goku's lineage really held up against it. Uh, we did really well during that match. Uh, our opponent did end up having to leave after game one, but based on how game one went, uh, I feel like we would have definitely had it for sure. Um, Pan is aggro, uh, but as long as you're keeping all of their cards off the board, uh, there's not really a whole lot that they can do. And with and with the swap mechanic, you're getting in multiple attacks, and if you get out the 3-drop Gohan, you're KOing stuff, and you can really just keep their board clear of things so that when... so that if they do drop that Fearless Pan, it really doesn't do a whole lot to hurt you. Uh, round 2, we ended up playing... A, uh, a sort of a mirror match uh, against another swap deck, although he wasn't running any Goku's Lineage Leaders or anything like that. He was actually running Mecha Frieza, uh, which at first when I saw it, I was a little worried uh, because it's Mecha Frieza, and to be honest, I haven't even played against Mecha Frieza since before the errata. Uh, I haven't even played against Mecha Frieza since before the errata was announced. So, I was playing against Mega Frieza during the time that he was still running Rampant. Um, I was pretty worried about Bloodlust, uh, but Bloodlust really didn't end up hurting me for the most part, because if he did Bloodlust me, I just wouldn't attack with whatever got hit, and it would just sit there, and if it had, most of the time it had barrier anyway, so it wasn't getting blown up, and in active mode it wasn't getting attacked by anything. So it would just be there for me to use for the next turn, and I could also use any leftover energy I had for other plays instead of using uh, the swap ability of the card that got bloodlusted. Uh, we ended up taking that 2-0. And then round 3, we ended up playing against the Hurudagarn Flute deck. That is a lot of fun. It actually wasn't that bad. We, we did really well game 1. Um, and we sided in a few things to be able to kind of help us out. We actually sided out all the 5 drops. And we ended up siding in uh, the Mass Saiyans and the Flying Nimbus. Um, the Flying Nimbus did help us a little bit. Uh, what really hurt us was the fact that we drew into zero two drops that we run six of and zero Successor of Hopes that we run four of. And so, for the most part, we were just playing super defensively. There was nothing we could do. I just kept dropping Bardock over and over again trying to get a two drop from my life I didn't hit a true two drop there either it was was really shitty I mean he won you know he won fair and square but it was it just felt so bad not to be able to do anything else I believe at one point I may have hard cast a three drop just so that I could then swap him out into the four drop Gohan but by that time, he had already had so much advantage over me, there just wasn't much I could do. Uh, so we ended up taking second place. The deck runs fantastically. I really do like it. Uh, I'm thinking, though, I might take out uh, the Super Saiyan 4 Gokus and possibly the Golden Great Apes. Or I may even leave the Golden Great Apes in just for their ability to constantly swap and add cards and side deck the Super Saiyan 4s for later games. I'm not really quite sure... Uh, I mean, I can always just charge them if, if they're not really doing me much good, so it's not like it hurts to leave them in. And the Super Saiyan 4 Goku combo is for 0 for 5,000 anyways. So that's not really a problematic card anyways. And the Deadly Golden Great Ape is the only card in the deck that has a one card, that has a one combo cost. So it doesn't really hurt to leave it in, but I might try and figure out a little bit more of a quicker way to run the deck, give it a little bit more tempo. Uh, but all in all, it played out fantastically, and I have such high hopes for the Goku's lineage. But if you guys enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed the deck profile, hit that like button down below for us. You know, we appreciate the support. We appreciate all of our subscribers. We are over 850, we're like 866, 67 now. And that is just fantastic, all the support we've been getting from you guys. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the deck, any suggestions you may have, or different ways that you run the deck. I love being able to discuss all this stuff with you guys, uh, and even seeing some of the stuff you guys come up with that I haven't thought of is just really inspiring, and it's really uh, awesome to see how the community can just be so creative with how few sets we actually have. And just a quick PSA as well, uh, I've spoken to a number of YouTubers uh, over the past weekend, and... 
And I just want to say that it's okay to like someone's build enough to copy it. Uh, and, you know, that's fine. We actually, most of the time, creators like myself, we, we like to see that people think that our ideas are good ideas and good enough for them to try out as well. Um, and I've gotten that from se several of my subscribers uh, amongst the various deck profiles that I've put up. Uh, the only thing is just just don't play it off as your own at least give us some kind of credit be like hey I saw it on YouTube or hey I saw it you know somewhere on insert social media but don't be one of those people to kind of discredit the things that we do we're more than happy to see anybody be successful with our ideas even if it's not ourselves uh, just as long as you give the credit where the credits do but with that we're gonna go ahead and get the freak out of here and we'll see you guys in the next video Come in. Ah!